authority over the civilian police. When you look again, as you are urged to do by the prosecution at the totality of the evidence, they don't refer you to significant portions. And let me simply highlight, because contrary to the prosecution's contention, this witness did not simply and merely deal with de jure authority. He also dealt with de facto. He said, both formally and de facto, the military could not command the police. Footnote 1553 of our brief. He said the civilian police did not have an obligation to inform Chermak about the process of crime. Footnote our brief 1602. No authorization to manage police procedure. Footnote 1642. Even if Chermak said or expressed the view that something should be done, not expected that he would be informed about the action taken. Our brief footnote 1676. <coughs> Chermak could not issue orders to the police. Your Honours, I could go on further with even just the evidence of Mr. Satina when uh, referred to in its totality. Time does not permit me to do so. But let me leave you with this request. We request the trial chamber and those assisting the trial chamber to deconstruct the prosecution's argument to reveal the truth of the matter about his relationship with the police but also the entirety of the indictment that has been put. That, I'm afraid, is not a function which has been carried out by the other party in this case. So we lay that responsibility and request in your hands. Your Honour, if I can hand the floor back to Mr Kay, who will continue with our submissions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Higgins. I was a bit surprised, Ms Higgins. Ms Higgins. Yes, I was a bit surprised by the reference to those who are assisting us. I think it's the exclusive responsibility of the trial chamber to deconstruct if you would intend to do so. At least that you can suggest to us, but not to chamber staff. I'm grateful, Your Honour. It's okay. Um, <coughs> thank you, Your Honour. Um, I'm going to turn now to deal um, with the subject of Grubery, which form part of uh, Ms. Mahinda Ratner's submissions to the court yesterday. Um, I'm going to take <coughs> the essential propositions from the prosecution final brief as the best way of dealing with what in itself is a complicated matter. Um, first of all, turning to paragraph 433 of the prosecution final brief. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chermak's knowledge of the incident in Grubery on the 25th of August. And it's asserted that Mr. Chermak told Markach he had received, in inverted commas, reports that people were killed and houses were burning prior to 5 p.m. Uh, on the 25th of August. Um, in our submission, that is not the case. Uh, unlike the local police, Chermak did not receive reports of deaths on the 25th of August, and neither did the garrison. The garrison was reported to only once at about 4 o'clock and told that there were fires at the village. Nothing more, nothing less, and that matter was then uh, received by Mr. Dondo, and he later on informed Mr. Chermak of it. Um, it, it, it is contended uh, through the testimony of witness CW3, footnote 1563, in fact, that the police duty service informed him 
of the deaths around that time and therefore that is how he knew of the matter it was not Mr. Chermak that informed him of such detail there is no link between the knowledge of the police on that day the 25th of August and Mr. Chermak's knowledge on the 25th of August they in our submission received independent reports uh, Mr. Chermak's interview is quoted uh, footnote 1564 in which he said they were telling me there were killings there were burnings in Grubery and that reference there at exhibit P2532 pages 66 to 67 is a clear reference to the UN TV interview on the 26th of August not the 25th of August and in fact what happened when uh, uh, there was contact between General Markach and General Chermak information was sought from Mr. Chermak on what had occurred and so he supplied the information that was passed to him through Gondo and from him he'd received it from the internationals if you see paragraph 215 of our final brief uh, that is where that matter it is set out it, in fact some of the evidence within the footnote cited by the prosecution footnote 1557 of paragraph 432 concerning Mr. Flynn's testimony that he only informed Mr. Chermak apparently of burnings not deaths and, and, and that is a reference there uh, to his evidence let's turn now to what was the central thrust of the allegations uh, yesterday uh, that Chermak somehow prevented uh, an investigation by the Kenin police um, Markach specifically dispatched uh, Mr. Sachich to find out what was happening uh, and it was he who went down uh, to Kenin and started to make inquiries uh, and first was looking for Mr. Romanich who was the local police commander uh, Mr. Sachich was looking for Romanich and as he gave ev evidence at T27652 it is clear that he wanted to speak to Mr. Romanich to find out more detailed information as to what had happened the clear thrust of Sachich's testimony and your honor I'm mindful that I should be in private session we move into private session my apologies 